to pet the kitty, but you can't. This game sucks. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Can't pet the kitty. Now I don't know where I'm gonna jump to. Let's go for it. Oh boy. Just gonna blind, blindly leap. Whoa, shit! Okay, no, this is good. I don't think there's any place over there though, so maybe. We've already been to this area. Mm-hmm. We gotta find food. Oh, maybe we have to go into the, um, you know what I'm talking about. The, the go steal a pretzel. Yeah. Hey, bae. Bae. Hey, baby. Hey, May. So wait, if she, if she puts her name as Bebe, then maybe they no, do- No, BB. What? <gasps> what? Why is there blood all over me? It's not, it's just a little bit, but you may be scratched like a scab. Okay, what? But maybe it's it's either Bay Bay or maybe BB. It's probably BB, but we're calling her Bay. But a lot of times when people have, I saw somebody in the comments mentioned that like, so since her name is Beatrice, some people pronounce the B-E-A, Bia. Oh, Bia Bia. No, we're calling her Bay. See, exactly. So Bay Bay makes more sense. Yeah. How's it going? Got a load of rock salt to move. Came in early this year and like a crap load of snow shovels. Usually the distro place doesn't goof up like this. Maybe it's run by weather wizards? Yeah, that's not a bad theory. So what's up? Want to hang out tonight? Uh, I'm working. If you want to, like, come along. Oh, I was thinking we'd go play putt-putt out in Hunwick. May, that's actually not a bad idea. But sorry, got work. Aw, oh, jeez. What is even the point? Paychecks, rent, food, medicine, that kind of thing. So do you want to come along or not? Got a lot to do today. Let's or, hang out. Let's hang out. Aw, oh, damn it! We didn't get to feed the rats! Hmm. Whatever. Now I'm worried that the rats are gonna starve. They'll be fine. Okay. They'll probably just eat mallard. Couldn't you just, like, refuse to do house calls? No. Why? It's called a job if people pay you to do it. Ideally, at least. You coming? There's a thing back here by the driveway. Yeah, she's an old lady. She's got weird shit in her yard. It's like a windmill. Yep. I've never been back up here before. May Borowski, you have now been here. It's nice. Yeah, just a bunch of old cabins people turned into houses. Some hunting camps. So don't, like, get shot or anything. Buck season isn't for a few days, right? Well, folks get impatient. <laughs> for murder. It ain't murder if it's animals. That's dark. We're animals. Hold that thought. Humans are animals. Well, they're literally animals. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying humans are just animals. We're all just animals. We're just flesh sacks. We're just waiting to decompose. Flesh sacks filled with meat. Just waiting. You gonna knock? Thank you for coming on such short notice. No problem. I can't sleep through four a lot through a f 
I can sleep through a four alarm fire, but that furnace. We'll take a look at it. Ever since Jean passed, I just can't abide that thumping. Understandable. Jean was such a darling man. Hey, what did you mean by hold that thought? Wait for it. I'll never forgive them for taking him away. Uh-huh. Hey, like I didn't they treat him, right? I looked it up to on the internet. He didn't smell or nothing. Oh. Wait for it. You can't take away a woman's husband just because he died. <laughs> there it is. Holy God. Take him right off that couch. It's a crime. Yeah, a crime was definitely committed, all right. They just couldn't abide not being able to text him anymore. That's what it was. Well, I won't talk your ears off about it. Come take a look at your, my fridge while you're here. We bill by the half hour. Good job. Yeah, it's a nice fridge. What's the problem? Oh, oh. Oh, there's no problem. It's just a classic, an original Luna fridge. Wow. They were all the rage when I was your age. They last forever, they make me feel so young. I saw one of these the other night when I got back into town. Oh really, where? Upside down under some logs in a creek in a ravine. Hmm. So, furnace. Oh yes, right through here to the basement. I feel like she's gonna try and eat us. <laughs> you know, like oh, it just get in, that way, get it? in the furnace, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Come on, May. There it is, my pretties. All right, we'll be down there for a bit. Please remember not to lock us in. What? Last time we sent someone, he got locked in the basement. See, I'm telling you, she's like a serial killer <laughs> lady. I assure you that did not happen. Um, he called me from your basement. Your man did smell a bit of booze when he came by. Um, okay. Busted. Or something. Okay, down we go. It was nice meeting you. I don't really know who you are, little person. Oh man, I love creepy basements. And why wouldn't you? I like that she's smoking in here. Look at all this. She's never not smoking. I know. <laughs> Splendor. Jeez, she's got a lot of junk. Maybe she's got a few more husbands stacked in the corner. <laughs> All right, let's get this done so we can go home. Baseball bat! Whoa. Ah, my old nemesis. Professor Lucius Von Nomeo. Fish, fish, fish. Fish, fish, fish. That's the, that's the furnace? That's the furnace. I've decided his name is Clanky. Okay. You just hang out. I'm going to fix this right quick. Don't, like, break anything. What am I going to break? This is a basement full of crap. Oh, jeez, okay. Shouldn't be long. Can I help? Nope. Why am I here, then? Because you wanted to come along. Just chill. Let's go get that baseball bat. Jeez, this is one old-ass fan. It's made of metal, and you, you could chop your finger off. Huh, badminton. Badmit bad bandminton badminton racket 
I bet I can make something out of all this junk. Jeez. Who would even have this much junk? I need your expertise to fix this stupid furnace, Professor. Oh, we're gonna grab oh. a bunch of stuff now? This looks useful. This looks useful. I could see this being used in furnace fixing. Now I have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, okay, I could see this being useful. But no not bats, the baseball though. bat. All right, so I can't carry anything else. So I'm gonna say this is enough stuff. <laughs> so got a gnome, a fishing pole, a badminton racket, and a fan. Got two wheels and a turny thing with no wheel. Probably just need to turn the turny thing. Why are we messing with this life? <laughs> I don't know. To open up the peacock. To Open up the heat pipes. I feel like we're gonna hurt somebody. Clanky's probably got loads of heat, but it can't get out. To get Clanky all hot and bothered, we will teach Clanky to love. I bet I could... Hmm. Could use this racket as a handle. Yeah, that would work. One good hard pull should do it. Okay, focus. Work this out, Mayborowski. This seems like a bad idea. That's okay. I wonder what it's like to get stuck in a cave. I saw this thing on TV about people that scuba dive in caves. Oh god, anxiety. Oh my god. Which, for my money, is really stupid. Like, in normal swimming, you can drown. But you're not in a cave with horses and stuff. Horses. I meant hoses. Why am I thinking of horses? Oh my god. Cave horses. What if you were trapped by a cave horse? I wonder how they'd pull you out. Probably just have to wing it, like, make some big complicated thing. I can't imagine there's a machine made just for pulling scuba divers away from cave horses. Although who knows what happens down there. Ah, focus, May. Maybe I should just wing this too? Just do it fast so I don't overthink it? All right, let's do it. Next part, scroll in quickly. Okay, tie the racket to the turny thing and then tie that to the fan, but wait, how am I gonna keep the fan from rolling up like a big fan fish? All right, sorry, Nomi. I have to put you upside down like a vampire. I think they used to bury vampires upside down so that when they tried to dig out, of their coffins, they just dig down because ha ha ha, stupid vampire. Now you're in the center of the earth and you died. Again. This seems like a bad idea. Oh my god. Hey, this looks great. I'm like an engineer. I used to make traps in my, like burglar traps in my house. In my <laughs> bedroom with like yarn and like toys and shit. I think a lot of people did after watching Home Alone. No, people just used to break into my house when I was little. Mm. <laughs> or whoever makes machines. A machine engineer? Alright, let's give this baby a go. Okay, done. What? I think I fixed it. Now let's see what we've got here. Yeah, we did. We? What did you do? Uh... I engineered an elegant long-term solution. God damn it. Way to go, May. Please don't fix anything ever again. Like, don't even have a pet. Anything you have to maintain. Ah, oh, friggin' crap. It was totally gonna work. This is so typical. I'm going to check the exit. Are we locked in? Probably. 
damn it. Well, we're locked in. We have no choice but to do lesbian kisses. <laughs> That's what it said. Don't look. Don't check. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. Stupid, stupid bay. We, <laughs> we could cut a hole in the floor. With what? Maybe she has an old saw down here. And we're going to what? Build a heap of garbage to stand on? And saw a circle in the floor. Like a cartoon? Well, not with that attitude. Well, this knob is really old and loose. Maybe I can, like, figure this out. I'll look around, too. Yeah, you go look around a whole bunch. The bat! Yep. What? Why would they put the bat here? They're just here to fuck with us. Hmm. hmm. The one thing she could hear is this furnace. When it was broken... Broken things need to be broken. Ah, so now we get the bat and break it? I know, we just keep going back to the bat. Hmm. hmm. Well, it's the one tool I do know how to use. A tool for beating ass! Oh my god. This looks bad. Yeah. <laughs> Did it work? I don't want to keep doing it. Alright, well. I guess we're gonna guess set our... this place on fire. Yep. Run away! <laughs> Suck it, you piece of crap furnace! Wow, that's pretty loud! Yeah, jeez. Surprised I can't hear that back in town. Okay, cool, she's coming, thank God. Uh, thank me, more like? Hey, Mrs. Miranda, you locked us in! See, she's a crazy lady. Well, that was fun. Uh-huh. You alright? She gave us lemonade! Yeah. You not like lemonade? It's fantastic. Then what's up? Nothing. Just tired. Worked all day. I'm all hyper. Good for you. Ugh, you're zero fun. Yep. You need, like... Some magical shit to, like, give you a new perspective. Let me know when that happens. Wouldn't want to miss it. All right, we got to do something magical for her. So... I think it's kind of romantic that every day we keep doing magical things for her. I think we go get a bunch of fireflies. So, I think that... It, her, what her friendship with Bay kind of shows is that like you know how she's like always like tired and everything and May always has all this energy because for May it's like she hasn't been here the whole time to see all the fucked up shit well to see all the fucked up shit and it's also like she kind of like chose like oh okay or like chose or got kicked out of school and now she's just kind of like fucking around doing whatever but Bay is, you know, she's doing, like, the grind every day. And she's tired. And she's tired. And, like, she, like, doesn't see, like, any positive direction that this is moving in for her. Mm -hmm. She, like, feels like Well, she, she wants to go to school. Wow. <laughs> You're like a firefly whisperer or something. They just like me, I guess. That's... You're an interesting person, Mae Borowski. Granddad said being interesting is all you can hope to be. Well, mission accomplished. Woohoo! You know, I have to say this much. 
This would have been a much less exciting evening if you weren't along for the ride. See? I'm good to have around. I mean, you can certainly beat the shit out of a furnace. I can beat the shit out of anything. You should, like, channel the digression you always have into something useful. So, when she said, like, I can beat the shit out of anything, do you know what popped into my head? No. What ha What popped? That song that's like, I'ma beat that pussy up. Uh, never, beat the pussy up, beat the pussy up. I've never heard that song and you should be ashamed of yourself. Why? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you shit. <laughs> Everybody else knows that song. I don't I don't know that song. I'ma beat that pussy up. Yeah. I it, know it seems Tom's like sex, but it just makes me imagine someone punching a vagina. Yeah, I mean, well that's like kind of the joke, but well, I don't think the person who like sings the song isn't on the joke, but like the funny part is that it's like, why would you beat a po- what? I guess it's because it's like you're slamming your dick into it, and men like to think of everything as an aggressive action. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Alright. Uh, Dr. Hank said way back I needed to, pr to repress it. Repress? Not like, learn to deal with it? He specifically said repress. Uh, okay. Hmm. So, do you think Mrs. Miranda, like, pulled her husband's guts out? Isn't that what you do for mummies? I don't know, May. Do you think you'd have the stomach for it? Nope. I probably took a lot- I probably took a lot of heart. Yep. I wish she would explain it to us. I get it, May. She really wrecked him. Okay, that's probably stayed in place. Okay, that probably stayed in place. <laughs> yeah, that should stay where it belongs. I'm leaving. Hey, you gotta live your life. Bye, this is me gone. Hey, wait up. You're walking back to town. You've got a lot of gall to say that. I'm calling the cops. <laughs> this is adorbs. We gotta hassle dad. How's work? You know, better than the glass factory. Is it? I've mined, I've ran machines, but now I get to slice steaks and hawk salamis. I mean, it's easier on the back, that's for sure. But like, do you like it? I like having a paycheck. Fair. Paychecks, the sweetest meats of all. What'd you do tonight? Oh, you know, stuff. Tired. Feel like I just did a day's work. You know, there are places you can get paid for work these days. Oh, really? Yeah, they call it working. Huh. You kids with your slang. Slang you could pick up at work. Okay, yes, point made. Uh, what about those boxes I asked about in the crawl space? Mm. I'm thinking about it. Watch some TV with me? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect timing. Garbo and Malloy is starting. Garbo and Malloy! Rawr, rawr. This looks Garbo like a Nick at Night show or something. Nick at Night. Ah, yes. You know, we like to get political here. Gotta do it? Gotta. You hear about this new law on the books? Pirating a movie online, you know about that? I do. Punishable by up to ten years in prison. Wow, and here I've been trying to get in the hard way. <laughs> he has, folks. Wonder if pirating a movie about the first degree murder earns you more prison respect than one of the one about grand larceny? Hey Malloy, you know what I think about that law? What, Garbo? That's a whopper! Ah, 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 ah. Coming up next, stupid sandwiches. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright, Pops. I'm out of here. Um, speaking of
Speak so speaking of stupid sandwiches, there was a segment on John Oliver where they were making fun of this guy who had it was like a politician in New Zealand or something mm-hmm. where he had taken a picture of a pizza that he made that had canned spaghetti and pineapple on it. Right? Okay. Canned canned that canned like spaghetti and meatballs with like pineapple on a pizza. And anyways, they were like, oh my god, like that's so disgusting. And so then they were like, here are some other like disgusting pizzas that like this guy would probably like. And so then they showed like, I don't know, something with like M&M's and like used condoms and like all these like really disgusting. You think it's a joke, but when I went to Japan, Japanese people, they like make American food or, you know, the type of food that United people in the United States eat. But it's always the weirdest shit in the fucking world. I saw a lox and cream cheese pizza. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't like a normal pizza. The lox was like piled like six inches high. Oh. It was so weird. And they like just do the weirdest shit. I'm like, no. Why? How can you mess up pizza? How are you doing this? Oh, this tastes pretty good. But it's still weird. <laughs> you know they have um, Dunkin' Donuts serves like seaweed donuts. That sounds good. In Japan. That sounds delicious. I So uh, a lot of like... Com- like American or like companies that are global, like especially with food, they will like adapt their market at least somewhat depending on the country they're in. Like there are, there's a vegetarian McDonald's in India mm-hmm. because so much of the population either is vegetarian or doesn't eat red meat mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. Hey, punk, what'd you do tonight? Got trapped in a basement. Beat up a furnace. Right on, man. Night, night. Uh. Hey, that was fun. Let's do that again sometime. You're pretty handy when it comes to breaking stuff. I'm sure there's a job in there somewhere. Yeah, it's called demolition. You can actually get a job doing that. Holy shit, I found my calling. I'm glad I could help facilitate this. Oh, so I looked up people who attract insects. Seems to come down to a lot of heat and various odors. They can't get enough of this. I guess not. Good night, May. AJ's chewing on his thingy. Oh. Night. AJ? AJ. Don't play at that anymore. We're busy. Mom. Your mommies are busy. He's like, but now what do I do? Put them on your lap. I didn't even take it that far away. Yeah, but you told him he can't play with it anymore. Mm-hmm. Is he getting it again? Yeah. Ooh, bad boy. <laughs> he just looked at him he's like, yeah, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. My good baby. My good little puppy baby. Okay, okay. All right, okay, sorry. I'm sorry I care about my dog. And that you don't care about dogs. No. Bedtime? Yes. Maybe that's why we never heard about the arm thing, because if they took it to the lab and they discovered it was a uh, prop. I don't know. The police officer, our auntie. uh, Molly. Our auntie Molly thought it was pretty weird. Like, that's why they were still asking, what's his face? Oh.
The tune sounds very familiar. Gotta find another thing in my jig. Ooh. Uh oh. Oh, that it was a river. I'm Jesus Cat. Jesus Cat. I think we have to go back to the middle. Oh. Cause I'm stuck in the middle with you. See, there's the moon. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what to do now. You. It's really, there's a lot of allergies where Stacy and I are right now. It's so bad, guys. It's so bad. I'm telling you, tree bukake. My eyes are like puffy the and patriarch swollen. Tree. And they hurt. Just don't touch them. There to the left. Where the fuck are we supposed to go? Hmm. Oh. See, this is where we started. Yeah. So we lit all four places. Oh, there we go. I see. see you're supposed to light huh. Right? Okay. I like how it always plays that like peaceful music when you wake up. It's like da da da, and you're like, Ugh. "Hey, boyo, I work all day. Very bored. Work sucks. Crap, Falcon, more like it." Hey, got a call from Mrs. Miranda. Apparently, she's upset that we messed up her basement. Whatever, she didn't pay us to clean it up. I'm at work all day. Just saying, if you want to say hello, I'm here to be helloed at. Mom looks tired. 
<sighs> Morning, long night. Yeah. I went to work with Bay. Oh, are you gonna work there? No, Mom, I was just tagging along. Though I was like really useful. Mm-hmm. It was a new and exciting feeling. Mm-hmm. You okay? Yeah, I've just been doing a boring adult stuff. Yeah, what kind of adult stuff? I'm adult stuff. Hmm. Hmm? Just like budget, bills, numbers. A lot of adulthood is number stress. That sounds bad. I'm bad with numbers. Oh, I remember. Okay, well, I'm gonna head out. Mm-hmm. Have a nice day. Numbers, numbers, numbers. So, have you noticed how everybody has kind of, like, that same, like, adulthood malaise? I don't want to talk about it, man. Well, I'm going to talk about <laughs> no! it. No! I can't. I can't handle it. No. Like, our parents, our, both of our parents have talked about it, where it's kind of like, well, you just get a job, and then you're an adult, and, and you know? Everyone's just mad. <laughs> And, you know, our friends have talked about it. Totally. What's up, Selmers? You know what's good? Off the top of my head? Wait, what? That oh, one. that sucks. Um, Not bleeding on your seat in junior high? Um, I was gonna say those fruit snack thingies we used to eat in grade school. Oh, right, yeah. Those things are really good. Did that other thing happen to you? No. Want to hear a new poem? <sighs> sure! Yes. Sometimes. I like fruit snacks. Out by. The train tracks. Decent. A juice box. And headphones. I enter. The juice zone. <laughs> Geez, those are like all I want now. You made them sound so real. I can taste the atomic dino snacks in the blue clear squeezer. Thanks. Think Mr. Chavosky's up there again. That's like, that's not what that. What? The guy. Chazikov. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? He's gonna fall on the stoop one day. I can see the water tower from my back window. Seen a fire up by there the other night. Wonder who was up there. Okay, we gotta go talk to Mr. Kopelop. Chazakov. You're gonna make my dog anxious. And she poops a lot when she's anxious. Sounds like somebody else I know. Named AJ? Mm-hmm. Or Mari. I'll let you figure it out. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Wait, you don't want to see the guy? I am. I just can't remember how to get up there. You jump. Okay, so go back. Nope, keep going. Which way? Oh, keep going all the way to the porch. Which porch? The guy, the one, the guy that we just talked to. So you jump, a triple jump onto the power lines. And then go to the left. Oh, wait. We have to get pretzels for the rats. Yeah. Can we get the pretzels first? No, let's do this first. We're already, we're already here. Yeah, but we're... Oh, yeah. The rats are a different spot. Yeah. Oh, you're going to need to triple jump. No! I feel like I started to tell the story about how when I was in junior high, my friends and I went climbing on the roof, and when then we thought her parent, like, uh, my friend's parents came home, and we thought they saw us on the roof, and so we ran away. Mm-hmm. And died. Are you dead? I'm dead. Okay. I'm actually a missing person. You're a ghost? Yep. I knew it. 
All oh, this time, you never let me touch you. All this time. That's not true. You pushed me out of bed this morning. <laughs> well, you were like, you poked me like, hey, get up. And I was like, okay. Yeah, because I you were actually sleeping later than I was. I know. So therefore, because you poked me, I pulled all the covers off and pushed you out of bed. <sighs> and then you fell on the floor and I thought you were going to land on your feet, but you didn't. No. Because <laughs> you didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Up here on my roof? Yep. Come to hunt some dust stars? Definitely. Come have a look. So are we getting up at, like, in the afternoon? Yeah, my eyes! Filter. Ugh. Let's have a look. Huh. Sterling the Seer. How come I've never heard of these guys? Eh. By the time they got to these rare stars, they will, the well-known myths and legends were taken. Oh. This one, Sterling, is a tale of the world changing and leaving one behind. These are all going to be bummers, huh? That's not for me to say. It is a bad thing for the world to move. Is it a bad thing for the world to move on? Well, I mean, this guy probably didn't think so. Either way, one day his king met a new sage, an astronomer, and she showed the king how the planets and stars orbit in regular patterns and why. And the king kicked Sterling out of his quarters, for the seer had long told the king a different story about the stars. Did Sterling believe his own story? I believe he did. Well, that's how things that's how things go. Is there no responsibility to care for those whose la whose labors, even one's universe, are suddenly replaced with a new one? Are they obsolete? That's how life is. No. What is to be done? I don't know. Uh isn't there some other job the king could give him? This is like labor economics told through stars. Mm-hmm. Or some way where he doesn't have to be useful to the king in order to survive. It's one to ponder. <laughs> the stars, they make one think. So I'm going to be honest, I missed that entire story. The story was about how, you know how, like... Like, I was reading it, but my mind was completely somewhere else. It was about a guy whose job becomes obsolete due to the progression of science and technology. And oh, so then he kicked yeah. the other guy out of the out of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But now the original guy doesn't have a job and he doesn't know what to do, even though he fully believed in his job. Yeah. So basically, it, labor economics. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, like... So that's, like, one th a thing that in my company we talk about a lot. Like, I think that... Both my parents are economists, and they're always saying things like, well, it gives room for more people to have new, different jobs. Well, but what you gotta do is you have to, like, make sure that the people whose jobs become obsolete have access to, to education. To education, education and training so that they can get those new jobs if you just say like they'll find a way they'll find a way they'll figure it out it's like but a lot of you know we well don't have the resources to go to school and then have two part-time jobs that are paying through school like come on yeah you know and especially if technology changes fast you could have somebody that's even in a job that's not obsolete but working with tools that are obsolete mm -hmm. yeah I don't, well i mean one of the nice things about the internet is that it's made it so that, like, there's a lot of, like, free training available. Mm -hmm. Like, even in my job, when ever... I've met a lot of self-taught programmers. Yeah, exactly. Programming is, um, actually one of those jobs that, like, people view as kind of, like, 
not an equalizer, but the, because there's so much like free resources out there, like, oh, you want to learn how to use Python? You want to learn how to use Java? You know, you can basically like go online and teach yourself. Mm. You just have to be determined to do it. Boom, found one. Let's see. Ah yes, Simone the fighter. She got a gun. Simone lived in a good land, but under every good land are the roots of oppression. And in this land, those roots took hold and choked out all else. Which one? That was poetic. That was poetic, Mr. Chazikov. Thanks. I was just reading the summary off my phone. <laughs> oh. We may not have signal, but we have Wi-Fi. Anyway, when the borders closed and the curfew began, Simone and her comrades began to plot. They infiltrated, they sabotaged, they freed prisoners. Very nice. Simone was one of the first to be identified, but she evaded capture, even as the wanted posters went up. As whispers of her, grew, of her grew throughout the land, more and more of her neighbors prayed in the night that Simone would be their salvation. It's a lot of pressure for one person. She was not alone, of course. She was but one part of a growing organism. But she became a symbol. It is difficult to think of many things, so sometimes having a symbol for all of them is important. Like numbers. We do not know where Simone is buried. Ah, god damn it. I knew this wasn't going to be happy. We do know that when things boiled over, she led a charge against the palace gates. Behind those gates were cannons. Oh no. Many years later, when the mass graves were exhumed, her bones were mixed with so many others. It was said that she now lives on in the bones of all in her country. Jeez, that got dark and sad and spooky. <laughs> that is history. That's both of them for today. Neato. Oh. Wow, that was pretty great. Come by again. Couple days, we shall hunt the stars. <laughs>